Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the main cast. We are back. Uh, welcome to our fun series of interviewing artists from the professional industry and our series where we uh, get to talk to you, the audience, and give you a perspective on theater for, uh, that is not connected to the SOS Theater Festival um, as we're on our break from that festival. Calliope, do you want to talk about the main cast and the SOS Theater Festival and get the audience caught up if this is their first time watching it or their 10th time watching it? Hmm. Um, well, this is our main cast show. Usually we have them on Tuesdays before the Friday performance in the festival, um, but we're so excited to bring you these extended episodes throughout the summer. Um, every week before the SOS Fest starts, where we interview um, actors and professionals um, that don't necessarily have to do with a show that we're working on. Um, but then in August, we're going to be doing another eight-week online theater festival um, where we will have shows based within the theme of social media. Um, and we're really excited to bring all of those shows to you. We have a lot of original new works that we're really excited to present. Um, and then those will be every Friday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. All of the shows are free. That's going to be from August 28th to October 16th. And then every Tuesday follow, or, um, before the show, we're going to have a main cast interview just like this, where we interview um, the crew members and cast members from the upcoming show. And now I'm really excited to uh, introduce you to two fabulous artists from the industry. Uh, if they could both arrive at the Zoom call, I'll let them kind of uh, start with our first question. So go ahead and pop on in. Hey. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, can you uh, both introduce yourselves and then give your professional background in theater? Sure. Um, uh, my name is Nikhil Pai. I, sorry, what were the questions? <laughs> <laughs> What's your professional background? Professional background in theater. Okay. Um, I have been acting, professionally acting for 11, 12 years. Um, I got my master's at the California Institute of the Arts. I am also a board member of the Independent Shakespeare Company that uh, provides the Griffith Park Free Shakespeare Festival every single year, including this year. Um, and uh, I also do some on-camera work in, uh, I know it's not theater background, but I do some on-camera work in television and film and stuff like that. Uh, and I am Roman Saragosta. Uh, my theater professional was about let's say nine years ago uh, but I grew up very much in the theater my dad was on Broadway when I was not when I was three years old he was in a, in a year gun in 1999 and so um, you know my parents threw me into modeling commercials at a young age but I think I would say my professional theater um, career kind of started about nine years ago when I started working with Native Voices at the Autry which is in Griffith Park as well which is kind of cool uh, and uh, so I've been working with them for the last nine years. And because of them, I got to work at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival a few years ago. And uh, I just finished working there after my third season this past uh, November. And I moved back to LA. And uh, yeah, I guess that's a nice little, little snippet. <laughs> <laughs> that's so wonderful. Um, so during this time, um, basically, what has, keep, what has kept you busy? Um, in your, you know, acting lives? And uh, have you guys done any virtual Zoom performances or, or, you know, even if it's not Zoom, but like, have you done any performances online that, you know, that kind of keeps your career going? Um, yeah, so this is a weird, a weird time in the world, I feel. Um, I feel like the industry has to take a real good hard look at itself right now. I think we're in one of these kind of, um, catalyst moments or like an inciting incident moment if you're a storyteller right um and we have to like reevaluate what theater is right now um basically from the standpoint of the industry we've pretty much halted <laughs> i think the entire industry across the board has has kind of halted um just because of safety and i think we're all hurting to to do things. We, I think we all really, really, really want to do things. Um, uh, I have not been a part of any of the Zoom readings or Zoom performances. Um, however, I've watched quite a few um, and they've, uh, they've been, it's been fascinating to watch how people um, problem solve, I think, because I think this is a problem solving time. 
Um, but uh, I've been keeping busy by teaching as well. So I, I teach uh, acting uh, and movement both at uh, California State University Northridge and NYFA. And so uh, I've been I've been helping others act in this <laughs> using a using a webcam. So <laughs> it's been it's been uh, it's been fun. Yeah. And also I uh, sorry. Uh, also on. Um, uh, every week, I host a uh, on-camera auditioning technique class, uh, which we've moved over to how to self-tape and how to do a Zoom audition, um, because I feel like that's going to be the norm in the upcoming months as we come back into the industry. Um, yep, so. that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I've done a couple of Zoom readings. I did one with Native Voices at the Autry. We did a Zoom reading of a new play called Native Pride and Prejudice, uh, written by Vera Starbird. And it was such a fun show to work on. And uh, it was weird, super weird. Like I have recently invested in um, making my own travel, travel sized self tape studio. So I have like a nice, uh, I don't have it with me here because I just flew down to LA. I've, I've been in Oregon for the last four months, but I have like a nice um, pop-up background. I got two lights. I got actually I have three lights that, that kind of deconstruct. And so that's been taking up my time is really trying to get that self tape studio into, um, into good shape. And, and I do a crap ton of self tapes uh, for those, uh, you know, uh, those open calls that a lot of casting directors have been doing for film and TV. And, you know, of course it's kind of a shot in the dark when you're, submitting with 15,000 other people but if anything it just kept me you know kept working that muscle which felt really good and um I've been writing and things like that I think but but those zoom things were kind of fun I did another one with American Indian Community House a lot of Native American theater and uh which was really fun as well so it's been nice to just keep in touch with the people and staying you know in touch with those communities and trying to just tell those stories still so yeah um, I think moving on to the next question, I think, uh, Nikhil, I know you're a professor and, um, Roman, you said you were like helping teach a class, uh, recently, right? Uh, I'm, I'm doing a workout class, not workout class. A, an but, acting class, that's but, fair. but you know, teaching, teaching some things. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but, uh, so I guess this question is more, uh, aired towards Nikhil. How do you, uh, how do you balance being a professional in the industry and then being a professor at Cal State University Northridge? And then how have you adapted to teaching your movement and acting classes through this little box through Zoom? Um, um, in normal conditions, being a professional actor and a teacher at the same time is difficult. <laughs> um, there will be, uh, there's a lot of schedule rearranging. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, sweating bullets when you don't know whether or not you're going to make it to one or the other on time, and you're driving across Los Angeles traffic. And you know, for you know, being in traffic for an hour for a five minute audition, and then driving an hour back to to campus and things like that. Um, such is the life. <laughs> Grateful to have the life that we have. Actors are so weird. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Adapting to Zoom has been a challenge. I think it depends on the course. I think it really depends on the course. So I teach movement at uh, CSUN and um, I had to reformulate my curriculum because people are alone. And so part of my curriculum is, is how do you interact physically with, with another human being? And how do you how do you create a duet with someone and that just is not going to happen so um it's just a lot of solo work a lot of um a lot of uh yeah um yeah a lot of solo work however uh i do think that the camera um just knowing both sides of both theater and film and television the camera makes you be specific Whereas the theater, I feel sometimes can um, hide a lot of uh, a lot of non-specificity because of how broad theater is. 
So the camera really forces you to uh, be really, really specific in your choices. And, and that's one thing that I found myself um, kind of leaning towards in, 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 in teaching was like, was, okay, we gotta, we gotta get really, really specific with our choices. We can't be general anymore. We really have to be specific. So um, it, it, it's, that, that I think has been a benefit because I feel like I was able to impart that in a little bit more, um, a little bit more forcefully and uh, consciously than I would have if I had been in person, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I love especially love the um, the idea of like you know having to be more specific or you know like because we're all in these little boxes. I mean, like how people use how people use Zoom or how people even coordinate how mm -hmm. to like because I think of I think of movement class and I think of like being in it like two years ago, um, mm -hmm. and I think about like all the stuff we did and I'm like how how can I do some of that um, uh, like one of the things that you teach or that I love is the is gesture and how do you do how do you do like very specific gestures on zoom that translate well to camera you know yeah yeah so yeah and also it's been a it's been a it's been an opportunity to tell theater students because I think one of the one of the worst things that gets told to theater students when they try to transition into film and television is that oh theater is too big you can't be too big and and that's not true you can be really you can be really really large you just have to be specific and you have to you have to be conscious about exactly what you're doing you can't be too general so you can be as broad as you want look at look at actors like jim carrey look at actors like you know robin williams who are these really really broad actors but they're super specific in what they do and um yeah so that it's it's yeah um you can still do it it's just you have to be conscious about what you're doing <laughs> um I think we'll we'll move on the to the next question, uh, Clypey. If you wanted to ask it. Oh yeah, no. Um, I was actually really curious. Um, have either of you guys learned anything in in terms of you know I, either practicing your art or or teaching it? Um, have you learned anything over this online format that you're going to continue in your curriculum even when we're back live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. That wasn't on the list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um I, I will say I will say hmm the thing for me with the zoom reading which was so uncomfortable but I think I learned from was was um was the silence that comes from not having that audience right there and and it's so weird doing a comedy in that because so much of it, so much of sometimes comedies is feeding off the audience, you know, of course. And that's what kind of correlates back to film and TV where you know, there's no audience. And so if you're doing a comedy for film and TV, the truth, uh, the comedy is in the truth, is in the honesty. So being honest in that moment creates the comedy, right? It's all situational, blah, blah, blah. But I think that is what I learned the most was just making sure, not trying to play the laugh, Especially when there's like, a, you know, you're like, oh, I want that joke to land. Well, you don't know if it does because you can't hear the audience. And I think that was a big thing for me is just like, just trusting if I make my decision, make, make that choice, fall through that choice. Like, like, like Nikhil saying, like, be specific and be honest. And I think that was something that I really, I was like, okay, I've known that, but I need to remember, I need to remember it because so often, especially when you're doing, um, I did As You Like It last year, I got to play Orlando, and so there was a few times where I'm like, okay, this one part I get a good laugh. Tonight, I'm gonna get a good laugh, and I'm like, wait, oh no, what, what, what am I doing? No, 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 that's not the point. The <laughs> point is to play the honesty, comedy will come. And so that was something that, to reiterate throughout, you know, so I feel good. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, you know, relearning the skills that, that you knew, but now it's like, oh, like now I have to really ingrain it. Right. I think that's what life's about, right? We all know what needs to happen, but it's like, we just need to be reminded, you know? And, and I also feel like we're in a point in time, I keep going back to this, this idea that we're in this moment of change 
um, we have to we have to think about like what 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 is theater now? Because <laughs> I feel like we're we're in this we're in this moment where technology is shifting what our industry is. Just think a few years ago with like Netflix and like, do you call a Netflix show a television show? Because it's technically on the internet, even though you're watching it on television, right? And so it's this, I think with theater, what makes theater theater is it's storytelling that's live, but also it has limitations to it, right? So if you're doing a show in Los Angeles, no one in New York can watch it. But if you're on a Zoom call, yeah, you can. And also you can have cast members that are in Canada and and like calling in. And so, so there has been a um, opening of technology into this industry, which I think, I don't know if I personally will like, implement this into a performance once we're back to normal or anything like that. But I do think that um, the technology that is available is going to be expanded on and used in such a way where you're able to bring in people that haven't been able to, you know, the, the close-knit family of theater uh, of doing a show, you know, for 20 people in an audience is, is, is kind of passe now after a few months of this, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, feel like we're gonna be moving in, in, a, in a direction where theater is actually implementing a lot more technology and a lot more simulcast live streaming sort of, sort of thing. I mean, like Hamilton just got dumped and now people are interested in theater now, <laughs> more so than ever before, so. <laughs> Talk along. <laughs> um, going kind of off of that note about mm -hmm. you know like Hamilton being online and you know everyone's kind of uh, every all these art you know moving to an online format. Do you find it? Do you, uh, what are some challenges that you find as actors on the Zoom format that you're like you know that you want to that you'd be like oh I always battle this even more now than I did on stage or. I mean, I know we're all missing that audience, especially in comedies, but uh, what, like, is there anything specific that you're like, ooh, this is, this is the biggest challenge of all? I think it's just the connection. Like, there's, you, you don't feel that energy, you know? It's, it's, it's sterile, mm -hmm. it's sterile. And I think that's the thing for me that I don't like, is, you know, even talking to you all right now, I feel connected, but I'm still like, I'm talking to a computer, you know, and, <laughs> and I think that's the hard part for Zoom is, you know, you can do all your work, you can do that and feel, and you're like, da, 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 all right, now I'm just going to be in the moment. And then you come in, you're like, how am I going to be in the moment? I'm looking at, I'm looking at my screen. This is so weird. And so it's kind of adapting with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's also a head to toe nature of theater where it's like suddenly we're all just in, desk chairs and and we're only acting from the shoulders up now which is something which which as a movement teacher like irritates me <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like i think the most successful zoom performances that i have seen have been ones where the actors are stepping back from the camera and are mm -hmm. actually using their entire body and mm -hmm. and, and and doing that and and it it's hard to see a, a, something that is called a performance when everybody is just sitting down. And, and, and yeah. yeah, that doesn't seem like a performance to me. Um, it seems like a reading. And, yeah. and as theater professionals, like we have to know what we're who we're doing it for. Are we actually, are we doing it to scratch that itch that we have as artists? Or are we actually doing it for our audience? Are we doing it for the story for our audience? And like, I think we need to be conscious of how we are presenting a story to an audience when they could be anywhere in the world watching anything, you know, you know? Uh, I, 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 I think we, that's the thing that we have to take forward when we, when we're, while we're doing these online performances is how are we, engaging how are we still continuing to engage an audience even though we can't be there in the same room with them um 
Is, is there anything that either of you wish you could get from a performance that you're either watching or that you're being in? Um, you know, like that, that just gives you, how do I phrase it? Like that just, that just makes the show more worthwhile for you. Um, like, is there anything that you wish that companies would do or actors would do specifically that would be like, oh my gosh, if they did this one thing, then that would really, you know, it, pull, it would pull me in a little bit more than just the, you know, just the reading kind of an well, aspect. Well, I think something to remember is if you're doing a reading, specifically a reading that you have rehearsals for, but it is a reading, that's for the playwright. You know, that is for the playwright. And, you know, sure, it's for the audiences, for people watching it. But at the end of the day, like, when we do it with Native Voices, my, with the theater company I work with, um, we do it to, to um, help the playwright, you know, work on the play, hear the play, and get good actors and to perform it and be like, okay, that works. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And to, for the next year, maybe getting a full production. So I think that's the key is remember that reading, what readings are for. And so when I did the first reading of Pride and Prejudice, Native Pride and Prejudice, I, I stood, I had to stand. I, I put my computer up because I was like, I cannot sit down. I feel like I'm sinking into this chair. It's, it doesn't feel like I'm performing. But there were some other people, uh, our director was like, you do not need to stand, but if you want to be recommended. But of course, like focus on the words. Don't get too carried away with props. If you can do props, have fun, go crazy. But at the end of the day, we want to hear those words. We want to hear those beats. We want to hear those things for the playwright. So I think that's something to remember, especially over Zoom. Um, for these like recorded shows that have already happened that people have, like Oregon Shakespeare Festival now is, is releasing, um, they released, uh, uh, what is it, a film, a film production of Copper Children that they did back in March and uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And they're streaming them now, which is so exciting. And I'm like, man, I want them to release all of them. I want to see them. But I think it's one, it's expensive because they got to pay all the actors and all of that, blah, blah, blah. But, but I'm hoping that theater companies can release more like um, and to, you know, do what Hamilton's doing, showing people around the country, around the world of what theater is. Because I think a lot of people just don't have access to theater and they don't have the ability to see theater. So I think that would be really great for people to see it more. Yeah. Um, speaking about uh, uh, the kind of like showing what a ha kind of what Hamilton's doing and what perform performances are doing, are you both working on any upcoming performances that are either going to be performed uh, slightly live or streamed or virtual that you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, so Independent Shakespeare Company, uh, like I said in our in the introduction, we are going to have a free Shakespeare festival this summer. Um, and what that will look like is uh, for, it'll take place over four weekends. The first four weekends will be a retrospective on, because this was supposed to be our 10th year in Griffith Park. Um, so it'll be kind of a retrospective of the plays that we've done in the past 10 years and um, how, why we made certain choices and there will be new, uh, there'll be like performances in there um, as well. So, so new live content, so it won't only just be a look back, but it can be, um, there'll be like people performing monologues and, and things like that um, or scenes. And then it's all leading up to the big project, which is uh, over Labor Day weekend. Um, and it will be uh, Romeo and Juliet, where uh, we will, it will be a half filmed, half, I don't know about percentages, but like uh, majority of it will be pre-filmed and then there'll be a live element as well so um the story is going to be told in between this in this in between space so currently what i'm working on is um so i'm playing romeo and i'm also uh helping to edit and be the cinematographer for it and it's also like adapting the script so that we can film it in a safe way so that no one's in the same room and so <laughs> that's, that's going to be, it, it's uh, difficult, but it's also like very uh, exciting because uh, again, creative problem solving. Mm -hmm. so. Really? 
Um, I'm doing a reading in um, August of a dear friend's piece, uh, musical called Missing Peace. And um, so that'll be probably in August sometime. Besides that, um, I'm trying to figure it out. Honestly, like I've been writing a good amount. I submitted a couple short, like a short play and things like that. And trying to just, you know, like, like you said, kind of like adapt and trying to figure out how can I perform or how can I um, monetize these skills that we have or trying to figure all that out. You know, I have self tapes I got to do. I feel like that's something that's taking up a lot of my time, which is good. But I'm trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to get that money, right? You know, how are we going to make money through our careers and through our art and, 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 and do art that we're proud of. And I think that's something I'm trying to figure out too. And uh, I moved out of LA, but um, I am going back to school to finally finish my bachelor's, which is exciting. So that's something I think that I'm, that's, that, that's next for me. So I'm starting school um, in August and going back for film production to finish that major. So um, yeah, you know, we're just, it's all up in the air. We're just trying to create art and tell the stories of the oppressed and, uh, and survive this craziness. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any um, last minute, like inspiring words that either help you through this time um, or that you want to give to other directors or performers um, or artists or even audience members um, that says like, don't worry, you know, theater will be back eventually. But like, you know, what has been what has been helping you keep going, at least right now? <laughs> um, when I was in grad school. Um, I had a knee injury where I had to have surgery. And so I was pretty much sidelined for a good portion of my grad school training, uh, or at least like the, a good portion of it. Um, and I had a teacher who said to me, um, look to the sky. The sky is always changing. So what is here will pass. Um, and what I will also say is that, <laughs> that stories don't happen unless the heroes choose to make something happen when the inciting incident happens. In the, so the story doesn't move forward unless the, the hero decides to, to go on the journey of change. And so with this particular crisis in the in the in in health wise and also uh with the social dynamics that are happening social equity that's happening right now which is happening simultaneously alongside this we are in this crucible of possibility and i don't think that any artist should look back at what we were i think artists should be looking forward to what we can be Um, I think what I'll say is I have put, for my whole life, I've put faith in the arts, whether that is faith in myself, faith in theater, faith in film and TV, because if you're in this industry, you have to have faith. You have to have that belief in yourself. You have to have that belief that it's going to happen. It doesn't matter if it takes five years, it doesn't matter if it takes 20 years, 30 years, if you really love it, you have faith in it. And I have faith in it. And, and um, I think one of my favorite things that someone says was, after the Spanish flu in 1912, you know what happened? A few years down the road was the Roaring Twenties. And I think that is a huge thing for me that keeps me optimistic. was like, you know what? Maybe it's going to be two years, maybe five years. Who knows? But I believe that art is going to come back even stronger. And people, people with the privilege of having money and the money to invest, I hope that they take their money and they put it into the arts in places because I know that in, in, in our brain, we think that arts are not necessary. And I am on the other side, I'm like, I completely disagree. I think mm -hmm. it's, inc it's incredibly necessary. And you'll see your mental health, you'll see. Like, what are people doing right now? They're staying home and watching Netflix. Like that is a testament into what, Art is. It, it, it keeps us sane. It keeps us, it keeps us happy. And I think people are going to realize that and it's going to come back stronger than ever. 
And also for you, for you commercially minded people, don't write anything about the pandemic. Write a comedy. People, people need a comedy after this. No, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> There's already too many, too many pandemic dramas going out right now. Like, come on. Like, I was thinking about writing this whole comedy about someone buying toilet paper. Of course, it's pandemic center. But man, like, I think something like that. Just tell the comedy, tell those funny stories. I think there's so many things funny going on in the world right now. And I think that's true. Like, tell those stories. Tell those stories. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy time. Mm -hmm. Lighten it up. I think this is a perfect place to end episode 10. Um, if you want to, you know, I would highly suggest that you look up both of these amazing actors and, you know, c come watch the independent Shakespeare theater company's Romeo and Juliet with Nikhil Pai. Make sure you're checking out uh, his works as well. Come check out Roman Zaragoza's amazing readings or anything else he's working on. Um, of course, you know, he's a playwright. So I mean, it'd be interesting to see his plays on Zoom or actually in real life one day. So uh, keep supporting art, keep supporting these artists. And from this main cast was start started uh, as just like a pipe dream of mine. And uh, it's been 10 weeks officially. So this is our 10th episode. And uh, I'm just so happy to have my co-host here with me on this journey. And I'm happy to have two amazing actors to tell their story and their journey. So thank you. Um, thank you, Calliope. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you, Nikhil. Um, Calliope, did you want to close it out with anything? I just want to thank you both for being so honest and vulnerable with us today. Um, it's, it's so great to just hear everybody's stories. Um, I'm so excited to bring these extended main cast so that we can get um, just a, a more real look at um, what, what professionals are going through right now. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys back uh, next week um, for another main cast with more professionals. And, um, and then don't forget to check out the SOS Theater Festival um, in August, starting on August 28th and goes through October 16th for six more weeks. Um, but thank you both, Nikhil and Roman. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming out today. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have fun. Have a good one, everyone. See ya.